Dishes. Yes, yes, que calos ustedes, which means hello and welcome in Greek to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making another delicious zucchini recipe. This is perfect for Meatless Monday. It's great for a dinner party because you can make it ahead and freeze it and then just bake it in the oven right before your guests arrive. I'm going to teach you how to make my zucchini and feta filo pie. In Greek, it's known as kolokithopita, and it just requires a handful of ingredients that are all vegetarian, packed full of flavor, and zucchini is definitely in season, and it's all over the markets, and you can pretty much find it all year round, so it's great to make any time of the year, especially now. Let's get started. Just go ahead and cut the ends off of the zucchini. And I'm making a bigger batch, but traditionally you put about five medium-sized zucchini in one pie. But since you could freeze it, if you have extra zucchinis in your refrigerator, get them out and grate them using a box grater on this side, the one with the th uh, thicker cut grater, or whatever you call it, <laughs> the thicker grater size. Whew, I don't know how yeah, yeah, did this back in the olden days. Uh, this is a lot of work. So if you have a food processor that has the attachment that grates foods like zucchinis and stuff like that, take it out and use it. It's going to save you um, <laughs> a little workout. <laughs> if you want to do the workout, that's fine with me too, but my shoulder hurts. Okay, once it's done, you're going to have a whole big bunch of zucchini in the bowl. Sprinkle it with about a half to one teaspoon of salt. What that's going to do is going to, ha it's going to help draw out the moisture and the liquid. You want to get out as much of that liquid as you can so that way your pie is crisp on the bottom and it's not soggy at all. So we're going to sprinkle this with salt. I'm going to transfer it into a colander and I'm going to let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes so that way all the liquids can come out. Then I'm going to squeeze the zucchini dry. So with my hands I'm just going to take it and I'm going to squeeze it and then I'm going to transfer, transfer it all to a mixing bowl. So next while the zucchini is draining we're going to finely chop all of these scallions. I have about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And I did about eight or nine zucchini over there. It's almost a double batch. Just gonna finely chop these. And I already washed these. I soaked these in water and just rinsed them out a few times. You can also finely slice these the way I'm do, doing it right now and then put it in a cold bowl of water and then just lift them out of that water. All of the sediment and the dirt is gonna go down to the bottom. And I'm just gonna use the entire scallion all the way down to the root. Just transfer them all to a big mixing bowl. This is going to hold everything. That is done. Now we're going to chop up this mint from our backyard. I already washed it. I'm going to get all of the leaves off and finally chop those. Now mint goes really well with this, but you can definitely use whatever herbs you have growing in your garden or in your refrigerator. Basil will be good, parsley. Uh, we're going to put some dill in here anyway. So go ahead and finally chop that. That looks good enough. In the bowl they go. Then I have a pound of feta cheese here. I don't think I'm gonna use all of it. I might. <laughs> We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna crumble half of it in here, about eight ounces. And then when the zucchini com comes in here, we're gonna see if we're gonna add more or not. Most likely we will, because I'm definitely a sucker for feta cheese. Love it in my food, lots and lots of it. Crumble it, always buy the block feta, never buy the crumbles. The block feta has much more flavor and it's much less salty and briny. It's better quality. So there goes eight ounces of that. I'm gonna wash my hands. And then over here I have six ounces of grated Parmesan cheese. You could use Gouda, you could use Gruyere, you could even use some cheddar or mozzarella if that's what you've got. So that's in there. I'm gonna beat these three eggs, but they're not gonna go in yet because I like to taste everything before the eggs go in because I'm not a fan of that salmonella if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just going to mix these all up and now I'm just going to clean up real quick because it needs about 10 more minutes for the um, zucchini to drain and then I will be right back. All right so 15 minutes have passed and I would say that maybe 20 minutes passed but I would say that leave it in here for 30 minutes if you can. Let me show you without even squeezing it how much liquid it has released. You definitely do not want that in your pie, okay? And it's still dripping. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take, first of all, I'm gonna tilt it so that way it's not sitting in the liquid. And then I'm gonna take the big bowl over here and I'm gonna take a handful at a time. Let me actually put it here. Because knowing my luck, it'll probably <laughs> plop back in there and absorb everything that came out. So I'm gonna take a handful at a time. I'm gonna keep this here. And I'm just gonna squeeze it See how much liquid is released? You could even put it 
in like a clean kitchen towel or a bandana or something and just squeeze it through that. That would probably be easier. That's like three squeezes. That's good enough. I'm going to add that to the bowl. And I'm going to keep doing that until I'm done doing this to all of the zucchini. And whatever falls in here, I'm going to get it out with a strainer. Don't worry. I'm not wasting anything. <laughs> so now I'm going to season it with a little bit more salt. I'm going to start with a teaspoon, a little bit of crushed black pepper. You can put as much as you want in there. You're going to taste it. So you can add more later and a heaping teaspoon of dried dill. If you have fresh dill growing in your backyard, go ahead and use that. Then we're going to give this all a mix. This is reminding me of zucchini fritters, kolokitokeftedes, which is one of my favorite type of uh, vegetarian meatball, I guess. They're so juicy and delicious, and I've done a video on this channel before. I'll link it up in the card section. They come out amazing, and they're actually really good as a burger substitute, like a vegetarian type of burger. But they're also amazing just with some tzatziki on the side. They're fried and crisp and juicy and delicious. This is basically that in pie form, minus the fried, uh, fried part. <laughs> this is baked and good and healthy. Okay, at this point you want to go in and give it a little taste. Tastes really good, but I think it needs a little more pepper and a tiny bit more salt. I'll do like a flat teaspoon of salt, like that much. And definitely <laughs> a little more feta cheese. That should be good. And at this point, I'm going to add the eggs as well and just give everything a final mix until it's all incorporated. And you know what? I'm going to switch to my hands because it's faster and it's easier. And I get a lot of questions sometimes by people who feel like, I guess it's normal to cook for your family wearing gloves. I don't. Um, I wash my hands probably 70 times a day, so I don't have to wear gloves. Probably um, the only place you need to worry about the people wearing gloves is at a restaurant. That's the only time they need to wear them. I don't wear them in my kitchen. It's not natural to me. And my hands are super clean, so no need to worry. And just like that, the filling is ready. So I have a 10 inch round deep dish pie pan here and I have a pound of phyllo. Now make sure you thaw the phyllo overnight in the refrigerator and then you leave it out at room temperature for at least an hour before you go to use it and you will have no problem at all. It won't, it won't stick, it won't crumble or any of that stuff. It's going to be very easy to use if you can get it out of the packaging. <laughs> And that's another thing, never take it out of the packaging until right when you're ready to use it. Now I have some butter that I've melted. Originally I made this recipe with olive oil and you could definitely use olive oil, but if you melt some salted butter, it just adds so much flavor. And go ahead and grease the bottom and the sides of the pan. And I also have some breadcrumbs here. These are panko breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna put a little layer on the bottom and what that's gonna do is it's gonna absorb any liquid that is released by the pie. So I'm going to take three to four sheets at a time. Let's start with three. And I'm going to put half inside of the pan. I mean, not half, like most of it to cover the inside bottom of the pan. If any piece of it breaks off, what happened here? Let's put that together. You put it like that. And the rest you're going to let hang outside of the pan. And then you're going to drizzle the top layers all over with some of the butter. You don't have to worry about buttering each layer. That's totally unnecessary. I mean, you can if you want to, and if your phyllo starts to rip, no big deal. Put the rip portion on the inside. The next batch goes over here on the side. So this, if this was a clock, it would be 12 o'clock, three o'clock. Drizzle butter. Another three sheets. Now I'm starting to run low on sheets here. This phyllo was not labeled, so you want to use number four phyllo. That's the best. Like you get the, mo the most sheets. So this one looks like it doesn't have too many, so I'm going to do just two more sheets on the sides. Maybe even do one more sheet. I'll have none for the top. Just like that. Drizzle some butter. And then since I have enough filling over here for two pies, I'm going to put half of the filling in here in one pie and then the other one I'm going to make and I'm going to freeze it. And if you feel like your zucchini is continuing to release even more liquid and you think it's looking a little bit too watery, you can throw in a handful of panko breadcrumbs in your zucchini mixture and that is going to take care of it. 
while it's baking. I just don't want it to be bready. I want it to be a nice juicy filling. That is good. Now I'm gonna take the sheets that are hanging outside of the pan and I'm gonna fold them over the filling. And each time you fold over, you wanna brush with some butter. And now you're going backwards. Just like that, you want it to be really nice and rustic. Lots and lots of butter for lots and lots of flavor. Last batch. Yum, it's already smelling so good. And then you wanna take any of the sheets that are hanging out and just tuck them in. Keep it nice and light, don't compress it. And now we're gonna take one sheet at a time that's left, or two sheets at a time. There are four sheets left. I'm gonna put this batch on top, brush with, or a drizzle with butter. And then I'm gonna gather up the ends to create like a crust and just tuck it, whatever's left over, tuck it into the sides. It's gonna be beautiful and rustic and it's gonna create really nice texture. And go ahead and brush the sides of it with the butter. And the final two sheets go on top. You go ahead and you tuck it in. Now I've done a video on the same filling and in instead of making one big pie like this, I created spirals. I'll link that up above if you want to do that instead of this. But this is so much easier. It takes less time. You put everything together in one pie pan and you're good to go. Those are nice if you're doing like a nice elegant vegetarian dinner party and you want to serve them as the main course and you want it to be really pretty, you can do that. And I'm going to take the rest of this butter and I'm going to pour it on top, focusing on the sides because you want them to get nice and crisp. Now at this point, I'm going to take out a serrated knife and I'm going to cut this into eight portions down the center and that butter is going to just seep right through the phyllo layers. Keep in mind that it's not all um, buttered. It's not buttered in between, so it is going to go in between each layer. You want to cut down to almost the filling, but not all the way down to the bottom. Hmm. This is going to make it very easy to slice and serve. Now, if you wanted to, you can sprinkle the top with some sesame seeds, black or white, or a combination of both. I'm just going to leave it plain, just like that. Let me get a baking tray, put it onto my baking tray. Just like that, my oven is preheated at 400 degrees. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna assemble the next pie that's gonna go in the freezer. And this time I have this, this pan right here. You could also do a few loaf pans if you wanna do smaller ones. You can do maybe two or three loaf pans. That is fine too. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make this one the same exact way I made the other one. And I will show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. Okay, so if you're working with a square dish like I was, this is slightly smaller. This is a probably eight inches, an eight inch square bowl. You can use eight inch, you can use 10 inch. You could also do this in a half sheet pan if you're gonna, if you're gonna do the whole thing, just like I did my spanakopita. You can watch that video up here and you'll know how to make that. But basically when you go to cut it, you can just cut it down the center and across horizontally in four portions and then cut each one of those portions in half so you can have little triangles. Now this small one, I'm going to freeze it. So I'm going to put it in my freezer and once the butter and everything sets and chills, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to cover it tightly with plastic wrap and it's going to stay fresh in there in the freezer for a good two months. When I'm ready to bake it, then what, what the best thing to do is to take it out of the freezer overnight and thaw it out in the refrigerator and then you can go ahead and bake it in the oven just the way we're doing right now. The other one I put in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and it's gonna bake on the center rack for about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. What you're looking for is for the top to be golden and beautiful and the center should be really nice and bubbly. I'll show you what that looks like. If you're cooking it thawed out of, the, out of the refrigerator, it's gonna take about an extra 10 minutes to cook. And if it starts to brown too fast, you could even begin it covered for about the first 30 minutes and then uncover it and let it continue cooking for another about 40 to 50 minutes. So I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. So the zucchini pie is ready. It took an hour and 10 minutes in my oven to bake. Now, if you feel like it's browning a little too fast, you could always tent it with some foil towards the end and then uncover it to, for it to get that final little golden brown bit. But make sure if you are gonna tent it with some foil, you put like a hole or two in the aluminum foil. I didn't do that because 
I also like to, like, if you feel like it's too brown, which I like the color that it has, then you can always peel off the top layer or tent it. It's up to you. You want it to be really nice and crisp. Let me tap into it so you can hear it. You hear that? That's what it should sound like. Once it comes out, you want to let it sit at room temperature for a good 25 to 30 minutes because the filling is still going to be bubbly and oozy and a little bit watery. Once it sets for 30 minutes, then it's going to set, it's going to thicken, and it's going to be perfect for serving. I suggest to serve this more at room temperature. It tastes best that way with a nice dollop of tzatziki on the side. It is time to take a bite. Mmm. The filling tastes so fresh. It's perfectly cooked. The perfect amount of feta cheese. I did go in and put the last little bit of feta in there while we were make, making the filling, just so that you know. The more feta, the better in my book. The tzatziki goes perfectly with it. The filo is nice and crisp and buttery. I think you guys are going to love this. The recipe, as always, is in the description box down below, as well as on the website, DemetrisDishes.com. Make sure you make it and you let me know what you think. Stay tuned because by the end of the week or by the end of this series, I'm going to put together a, a montage of how to put together a delicious Mediterranean feast for a dinner party or for your family. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And this is going to be part of it. I'm going to do that by showing you how to use all the freezer meals that we put that we're going to put in the freezer for all of the recipes that we're going to make this week. Thank you guys for spending time with me today. I will see you all next time. Yes, us.